So the likelihood of Sunni Arab states acquiring nuclear capability to counter the Shia Persians is great. Would you not agree with that? I agree, and also other non-Sunni Arab states in the general region. Boy, so what kind of world would that put us in? Stephen Yates joins me now. Deputy, he served as Deputy Assistant to the Vice President for National Security Affairs from 2001 to 2005. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Good to have you here this morning. Well, what, what's your reaction morning, to that back and forth? Well, it's an important warning because of who the general is who is speaking. Uh, he's, after all, the commander of this central region and has had more one-on-one -on -one leadership meetings than has the new national security team of President Obama with a new Secretary of State and Defense. And so he has a very clear sense of what the thinking is of those in the region who are concerned about a breakout capability in Iran. So what would that mean? You know, it, it, you go to the next step. If Iran does indeed have a nuclear weapon, which everyone from the president uh, on down agrees, we, we want to try to prevent from happening, if at all possible, uh, that that will spark an arms war in the Middle East. Well, in a certain sense, I think his warning is telling us that the, that strategy is baked into the cake already. And in, in many ways, Iran has not declared that it has a nuclear weapons capability, and these states haven't declared that they have programs to counter it. But they see that U.S. efforts and international efforts by sanctions and other means have failed to change this trajectory, and they know they can't rely on those efforts alone to protect their own security. My sense is that they likely are already underway and proliferating uh, this dangerous technology across the region. You know, we heard some stronger language from Secretary of State John Kerry with regard to Iran the other day. What did, what did you think about that? Well, it's one thing to take a tough tone. Uh, and, uh, of course, the Secretary has offered a few warnings in the region to the leader of Syria, which is also a part of this strategic play by Iran. Uh, but we have to back it up with an or else, uh, and it has to be credible. Uh, one of the problems we have right now is that Iran doesn't seem dissuaded from its current path. Its primary enablers in China and Iran don't seem dissuaded, and our allies in the region don't seem assured. But if you're saying, uh, so obviously, I think the that, combination that the, of, I'm sorry for interrupting, that the, the, the sanctions have not worked. You know, what, what we're, I mean, and or else, you know, President Bush said the same thing, that all options were on the table. I mean, where do you go from there? What, what posture do you take after that? Well, I think that all options do need to be on the table, but they need not be extreme binary options between, say, an Iraq-style invasion or just continuing to talk and doing what we know hasn't really worked. Uh, we know that there are divisions in Iran, and we chose in 2009 not to support those who wanted to counter the leaders who are pursuing these dangerous weapons. We know that there are actors in the region who might of their own want to try to shape developments in Iran and the broader region, like I said, with Syria, but we have not sent a clear signal of whether we would even consider sanctioning them if they took actions to support those who counter these forces. So a lot of middle ground that is yet to be defined, and ultimately it's up to the president to say, what do we seek and how do we have in mind to accomplish it? It's such an interesting point, uh, and it's something that President Bush talked about, you know, even midway through his term in terms of encouraging change from within and in surrounding countries that might help to move the needle a little bit in that situation. Uh, hasn't happened yet. Thank you so much, Stephen Yates. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Martha.